Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nisal Gakadam and thank you so much for 2000 subscribers and I'm so happy to have family of 2000 subscribers watching my YouTube channel and all those who have not yet subscribed please go ahead and subscribe this helps me a lot. So subscribe to my YouTube channel right now to get started and we will move right away to the latest topic or the today's topic. So on the occasion of this 2000 subscribers happiness, we are going to launch a second episode of UiPath interview questions, which is dedicated to the senior RP developers. Why is because this series will talk about, or this specific episode will talk about the questions which are asked mostly on RE framework. So yes, today we are going to talk about top 20 questions, which are mostly asked in UiPath senior RP developer interviews, where we should focus more. So let's get started with that. So I have listed a couple of questions and we will talk about them in this entire episode. Okay. So the first question is explain the flow of execution in RE framework. So this question will definitely be asked and mostly is asked in each and every interview that explain the flow of execution in RE framework. So by this question, interviewer wants to know whether you have the knowledge of the state flow, how the states exactly work in RE framework. So there are only four states, you know that in each state, then there's get transaction data and then there is process and then there is end process. Okay, so how this four states exactly works and what is the logic be, uh, behind it, how it works, they just want to know the overview of it. So don't go into very deep ex explanation, just explain on top and just give them a little bit brief about the execution in quite little steps. Now I'll tell you the answer how you should talk about it. So let's, while we are talking, we should, let's go to the RE framework, yeah. Now, now, when you answer this question, be very specific. You start it in such a way that whenever the RE framework executes, the first state executes is initialization state. In the initialization state, all the initialization of the applications or all the applications which are being used in the entire process of automation will be initialized. And if there are certain processes where login has to be done, where the uh, data has to be collected in dispatcher process, that will be executed within initialization block. If there is any system exception in the initialization block, it will end the process right away. If there is no system exception, the process will move to the next state, which is get transaction data. In the get transaction data, the, the workflow will simply collect all the transaction data into one transaction data variable and pass one by one each and every individual transaction to the process transaction. In the process transaction, the main automation or the main piece of uh, process happens where process will happen on the specific transaction data. And once the transition data is being processed based on the three outcomes, the data next state will be decided. If the transition data execution is successful, it will move to the get transition data again to fetch the next transition data. If the transition data is uh, having a business exception, it will simply skip the specific transaction. It will still move to the get transition data to get the next transition data. If the transaction data processing has system exception, then bot will move to the initialization step again, and bot will start all the applications again from scratch in order to ex in order to perform the transactions. Once all the transactions are performed and processed, then bot will simply move from get transition data to end process, and the workflow will execute and workflow will complete. So this is the basic explanation that the interviewer needs from you. So don't go in much deeper. What I just said, repeat that. That's the, your key of the answer of explaining the flow of execution of RE framework. That's it. If interviewer asks you uh, further to brief it, then go ahead and brief it in deeper. For that, watch my entire video of UiPath RE framework explanation where I have uploaded it on my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and you can check it there. That is a 40 minutes of entire explanation video. If you watch that video just once, you can answer all the questions on RE framework. Now the second question, what are the advantages of RE framework? So this question will definitely be asked. The advantages of RE framework, there are many advantages of RE framework. The first thing that why it is called framework is because it's already created framework, which is which you're getting ready-made. So you don't have to actually create a framework again. And this is happening only in UiPath right now in the RPA market. So this is a ready-made framework for any developer to perform automation on any transactional oriented process. That's why it is really, really very important for every developer. That's the first key point. Second key point, there are many exceptions. There are the best exception handling uh, you know, used in RE framework. 
and uh, all the exceptions are properly handled uh, and you, you don't have to make so many efforts to do that. So that's the second key. The third important thing is the logging mechanism is handled very properly. The testing mechanism is handled very properly. And also the most important part is that for a transaction oriented process, it's very key and simple flow, which you can use. Also, you can talk about how RE framework is useful in case if you want to use it as a linear process, so it's, uh, it's model, you can change the uh, flow of execution also. And also you can use RE framework because configuration or the settings file is already defined. So you don't have to hard code anything. And for Q, uh, if, if you're using orchestrator Q, then it's even more better in order to retry any transaction, the retry current transaction or retry transaction is automatically uh, given in RE framework that you don't have to write a complex logic for that. So all these things which have already pre, pre-written, pre-coded, pre-given to you as a package, and that is the advantage of RE framework, which reduces a huge lot of efforts of development, which everybody likes, okay? The third question is how many global variables are there in RE framework? So there are total 10 global variables in RE framework. Always remember that. The answer to the question of how many global variables are there in RE framework, this will be asked definitely. The total number of global variables in RE framework are 10. How do you know that? So just simply come to the most outer part, to the main of the RE framework and click here on the variables, expand this. And believe me, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I told you 10 global variables and also you have annotations for each and every variable. So you can simply hover on them and you can get the explanation of each and every variable, what it, what it is all about, okay? So it's very beautifully written here. Don't have to worry about it. The fourth question is close all applications.xml is a part of which states? So close all applications, so don't rush too much you will immediately answer that the closal applications is part of only end process. But no, it is also part of process transaction. Why? In order to check that, let's navigate to the project structure of every RE framework, which has a folder called as documentation. Open the PDF of the documentation and navigate to the page where I will tell you to stop. Just give me one second and scrolling, 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 scrolling. Now this is important. I have to tell you this. Okay, the page number 14 in the documentation, check this. So you can see all the workflows here and these workflows belong to which states. So you can see here, closal application is also in process transaction and it's also in end process. So it's not only in end process, but it's in two states. So remember that the answer to the question of Closal applications is a part of which states? It's part of process state and end process. End, end process. Now, similarly, kill all processes XML is part of which state? So it's part of three different states. Init, process, and end process. Let's go ahead and check it. So kill all process is in initialization also. Then kill all process is in process transaction also. And kill all process is in end process also. So there are three states which consist this kill all process. So this RE framework documentation is really important. Remember that that's why it is given in each and every RE framework that so that you can go ahead and you can read it. I hope you have read it completely. That would, uh, that will give you even more explanation about the RE framework. Now the sixth question is about if you are using orchestrator Q, then which retry number has the highest priority? So it's not about the highest priority, but which retry number will be considered and which will not be considered. So if you're using orchestrator Q, remember only Q retry number will be considered and the retry number written in the configuration will not be considered. Now let's go ahead and check where, it, where you can find it. So in the UI path RE framework, if you go to the project folder, in the project folder, if you go to the data, in the data folder, you have a config file, right? In the config file, you can see in the settings, uh, in the constants, there's a max retry number filled here, which you have to fill with an integer value if you are not using orchestrator Q. But you can see here in description clearly, if you're using orchestrator Q, then it must be zero. Because if working with orchestrator Q, if it is greater than zero, the robot will retry the same number of transaction which failed with the system exception must be an integer value. So that's why it has to be zero. Remember, if you're using orchestrator queue, it has to be zero. I hope this explains a lot. And now let's move to the next question. 
So we'll make it very quick. Question number seven. So what will be the data type of transaction data if transaction item is data row? So what will be the data type of transaction data is transaction item is data row. And most of the people answer here very quickly that it should be data table. Yes, it could be data table, but also there are many answers to this. This is no, there is not only one answer. Whenever I ask this question in any interview, I get answer of uh, as data table. And then I ask, okay, and what more Then people, you know, get a little confused in that place. So data row, if a transaction item is data row, then transition data could be data table, could be array of data row, could be list of data row. So also it could be some other format of the enumerable data, which consists single entity of a data row. So any enumerable data whose single ob object or single entity is a data row can be transaction data. Remember that, okay? Because we work here with the enumerable data. Now, what will be the transaction data and transaction item in case of email automation? So in case of email automation, the transaction data will be list of email, uh, list of mail messages, okay? A single transaction item will be mail message. Now, let me show you what that data type will be. So let me just quickly show you that. Okay, browse for types. So single uh, transaction or transaction item will be mail message. And the reference of that is system.net.mail.mail message. Okay, but when there are multiple emails, then the transaction data will be list of so you simply have to consider this as a list of, and the list will be of uh, system.collections.generic list. So it will be list of mail message. So it will be like this, okay? And this will be the data type. So system.collections.generic.list, system.net.mail.mail message. So that's your answer. The answer to this question is, if my automation is of email automation, then the transition data will be list of mail messages and transition item will be mail message only when all the emails are considered as transition data and single email is considered as a transition item. Remember that. Now, which part of question number nine, which part of RE framework runs only once in entire execution? Now, this is a very tricky question. People get really uh, tricked here and they don't, they don't tend to answer. But remember, this is a very simple question, which you can uh, answer very immediately. Which is the part of RE frame? What is the part of RE framework which runs only once in entire execution? Now that's very simple to know. Let's go back to the main workflow. Let's go to the initialization. Here you see, as we initialize the RE framework, the first thing we do is we enable system exception as nothing. Okay. And remember, now why have you ever wondered why do we initialize system exception as nothing in the beginning of RE framework? Have you ever wondered? No, right? Now remember this, this is really important. Now, if you have enabled system dot, uh, except system exception as nothing, then let's go here below. And, and then let's try to look here, okay? So if first run, read local configuration file. Now, if this is a first run, check this. Configuration is nothing, okay? Now config is nothing only when you have not executed, I mean, you are, you are executing this RE framework right now and this is executing this is starting point only in the starting point config will be nothing because rest of the times whenever initialization block will run config will have certain value in it right because you are going to use config always in our frame now you will ask me one more thing why will we come back to initialization we will definitely come back to initialization in case of a system exception correct so why do we need to make sure that some of the workflow runs only once and it does not and it should not run when it when this when the initialization block is executed second time in that case you will have to write your workflow within this first run block this first run block which you see here in the condition of if first run this will run only once in the entire execution because configuration will have certain value after the execution of RF. I hope you understand this config is nothing will be only a single condition, which will only be happening in the beginning of the RE framework and not after or uh, during the execution. Okay. So whatever you write within this first run, 
will run only once. And that's where you should write your dispatcher. You should write your dispatcher right below this killer process. Remember this, okay? Let's go back to the questions. Now, question number 10. What happens if closing application fails? Okay, so what happens if closing application fails? It's very simple. If closing application fails, then in the, which is obviously in the end process, okay? And it's also in the, in the process transaction. So we can handle it in the process transaction, but if in the end process, what happens if the closing of application fails? It will definitely go to the exception and it will throw a log message saying that application failed to close gracefully. So gracefully it is not closed, but it will abruptly kill the applications in case if it is not closed. Okay, remember this, this is the correct answer to that. Question number 11, when will the retried transaction be processed. Now this, for this, I don't have to show you anything, but the answer to this is last. So whenever a transaction is failed and it is, and, uh, is, it is attempted to retry, okay, for the second time, and uh, then it will be retried around the end of all the transaction, rest of the transaction. It will not be immediately retried. Remember that. Whenever a transaction fails, it will go back last in the queue, and then it will be processed around the end of the queue. What changes, question number 12, what changes to make in case if we have to use RE framework for a single transaction? Now for, to answer this question, I will have to show you something which you can read as a reference. I'm showing you this is because you should know where to find all the answers. Now let's go to the PDF, which I showed you earlier. This is the PDF, which you can get in every RE framework folder in the documentation folder. In this PDF, just simply click find and just search single transaction. That's it you have to do. Search it two to three times. Uh, yep, here. Now on this page, just read this very carefully, okay? For a case in which there is only single transaction, that is a linear process, the developer should add an if activity to check whether the argument in in transaction number has value one, okay? and assign the transaction item to out transaction item. In such case, for any other value in out transaction number, out transaction item should not be, should be set to nothing. And it is saying refer figure number seven. So let's go to figure number seven, which is, which is, where is the figure number seven? This one. So this if condition you have to add in case if you want to use RE framework for a linear process. Okay, so this is the answer right here on page number 19 on the RE framework documentation. So you don't have to worry about the answers. You will get the answers very carefully. Okay, simple. Then let's navigate to the next question. So question number 13. Can we add one more state in RE framework? Yes, absolutely you can. You can make any changes as you want. RE framework is not uh, something which won't change or there are something which is grayed out. You cannot delete, nothing like that. You can delete, you can change, you can edit anything that you want. You can even delete a single, you can even delete a state from what you're currently using in RE framework, right? You can do that. So don't worry about it. You can add one more state and you can give logical conditions to that. Question number 14. If there is a system exception in get transaction state, then which state will be executed next and why? Now, this is a very simple question. This question will be asked definitely. In get transition data, if there is a system exception, that's what I asked, get transition state, if there's a system exception. So simply, if there is a system exception in the get transaction state, then what will happen? It will automatically go to the exception here. Check this, in the exception, what will hap happen? Transaction item will be set to nothing. And what happens if transaction item is nothing? Check this. If transaction item is nothing, that means it is no data. It will automatically go to the no data and it will end the process. That is what will happen. So answer to the question, if there is a system exception in get transaction, the answer is it will end the process. Question number 15, what happens when we stop live running RE framework process from orchestrator jobs panel? Now it is talking about we stop. So remember there are two buttons to stop the process from jobs panel in orchestrator. One is stop, another is kill. Kill is abruptly killing the execution and stop is gracefully stopping. Now, how do we know that we have clicked on stop button? 
For that, if you navigate to the RE framework in the get transition data, you can see there's a check stop signal activity here, which is nothing but a should stop activity, which checks the heartbeat mechanism of the orchestrator connectivity. So when you are connected to the orchestrator, it automatically checks that you are connected to the orchestrator and you have clicked on the stop button. So when you have clicked on the stop button, it will automatically check this condition. The output of this activity is a Boolean value, which is should stop. It will become true if you have clicked on stop button. Once it becomes true, it will navigate here. It will say stop process requested. It will set transition item to nothing and it will smoothly, gracefully go to the end process and it will uh, log out of your application and kill and, and stop the workflow. So this is called as graceful stopping. And this happens only when you click on the stop button from the orchestrator. Remember which activity takes care of that is the check stop signal. This question will be definitely asked. Question number 16. Question number 16 is, can we use our framework for multi-transactional input data use case? Yes, indeed you can. In that case, however, you have to do this. You will have to create one more transaction data. Now the one transaction data will be this. The another transition data will be array of which transition is already processed. And then you can write the transition data or you can change the value of that one within the system exception actions here. Or what you can do is once all the transactions are processed where the new transition item is checked always, then you can move that again back from here to the initialization. And you can write your own state here based on the condition. So you can absolutely do that. Now, what is the data type of you know, question number 17? What is the data type of config variable in RE framework? The data type of config variable will definitely be asked. The data type of configuration variable is a dictionary of string comma object. So remember, let's go to variables and over on this one and you can see it's a system dot collection dot generic dictionary of string comma object. So the key is string and the value is object. Remember that, and this question might be asked. Okay, so sometimes we do not tend to uh, you know focus too much on that, but it is it is important. Which state executes in case question number eight? Which state executes in case of business exception in process state? In case of a business exception, we know that it's a business exception which is going to happen. That's why we do not put up a system exception. We do not uh, abruptly stop it and go to initialization. We simply skip the transaction and we go to the get transaction data and we process the next transaction. So in case of a business exception, we go to the get transaction data state. Remember the answer of the question number 18. Now question number 19. Question number 19 is, we, where can we write dispatcher in RE framework if not a separate workflow? So sometimes dispatcher tend to be a separate workflow, but if it's not a separate workflow, where can we write RE framework? I just gave you the answer. So we can write dispatcher in the initialization, in the first run below kill process. Kill process takes care that all the applications that you're going to open, they are freshly started. So it kills all the already open instances of it. And after that, you can run your dispatcher right here. And you can see my comment here, here goes dispatcher, upload data inside the orchestrator key. So you can remember this when you have to write the dispatcher. And finally, moving on to the last question of the day, so question number 20, what are the two types of exceptions in RA framework, which will be always asked and it's a very simple question, but you have to make sure that you answer very properly. So two exceptions which are taken care in RA framework is business exception and system exception. And that's where it plays all about the process. So let's go to the process transaction. In the process transaction, if you see business exception and exception. So there are two exceptions which are handled here. Click on the exception. You can see system exception, you can see business exception. In the finally, there's a set transition status which runs entirely on top of this exceptions. And you can see, you know, success, business exception, system exception, based on all the exceptions, it takes decision what to do next. And the, the logic, entire logic is right here in the set transition status. So study this set transition status very carefully, which might be asked. So that's all about our today's video that we have uh, looked at. So we have today looked at total 20 important questions that might be asked in every senior RPA developer interview for UIPA. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. And if you have any more questions that you would like to add, 
add right now in the comment section so more people can learn and more people can be very confident while they are giving the interview thank you so much and i and let me know if it helps happy automation take care